Well, hello there, folks. Welcome to Travels with Jordy. My name is Peter, and I live on this old wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with my pup Jordy, who is snoozing. Anyway, this is not a regular episode. It's sort of a bonus episode, and I'll tell you why. Yesterday's episode about the uh, aft cabin door, which I'm looking at behind you there, and it is gorgeous, I'll tell you, uh, ran really long. I had way more footage than I could really use, and it's not enough footage to really create another whole episode for next week. So I thought I'd just put it all together in a little extra mini episode for today. Okay, this is a piece of the same wood, albeit it's been around for a year or so, being a temporary hatch over my companionway. So I thought maybe if I could bring it back to the lovely red that uh, a new piece has, I could do some stain tests on it. Well, just to show you how thin the veneers are, I couldn't get the top veneer back to red before I cut right through it. Now this is a reality that we all have to live with in the wooden boat world and just about any outdoor wood world. Keeping wood nice outdoors is a fool's game. Absolutely everyone loves the look of natural varnished or oiled or whatever wood outside. You build something that looks fantastic, buttery and beautiful. If the sun is evil, beautiful. It's going to turn everything, no matter what it is, into yellow. Now pine, hemlock, Douglas fir, oak, mahogany, teak, doesn't matter what it is, some wood takes a little longer, but eventually it all does that. Now, the toughest color to maintain is red, because red, because of the wavelength, is the most vulnerable. Anyone who's ever had a red car knows that too. So keeping wood, mahogany, teak, etc., looking red out in the sun is very, very difficult. No matter how many coats of varnish you put on it, you may protect the wood, it may not rot. But the sun will get through and eventually it'll be yellow. And you just have to decide whether or not you have a yellow wooden boat or you're going to strip it all back down and re-wood it, as they say, and cut through into red wood. But the truth is, the UV damages the wood well into the fibers. When I refinished this boat the first time, the wood was yellow dangerously far in. Like I'm talking a sixteenth of an inch I had to remove to be able to get to red wood again. So I have to accept that this boat will probably never be rewooded again in its entire life. If you're going to keep a wooden boat outdoors, in other words, not indoors in a, in a boathouse or under a shelter of some sort, which is what all the really, really, really pretty wooden boats do, you have to accept that it's not going to stay that pretty red for too long. Long story short, in time, the panel of my wood door and the frame of my wood door are both going to come to the same color because of what the sun does. Of course, indoors, that effect is much slower. So, ah, does that actually help me with what I'm doing? No, I certainly can't use this piece as a test though, that's for sure. Would I use this nice brand new piece of very expensive plywood as a test? Yeah, yeah, better, yeah. All right, so we're ready for a laboratory experiment. I'm gonna try four finishes on here. This has had a very quick sanding just to get um, the roughness of the grain off and the very top layers of the soft fibers off. I am gonna try Pure stain. Now this stain is my magic combination. This is a four to one blend of tongue oil and the stain. In other words, um, one quarter stain, uh, four parts tongue oil. Then I'll also try just some tongue oil by itself and I'll try some of my famous, not my famous, the stuff I really love, my wipe on poly just in one spot. All of these I'm going to rub off again with the exception of the wipe on poly. It's the only way you can really do it. Okay. So, I'm going to start first with the stain itself, which is going to be super dark. And there we go. The next one is the blend of tongue oil and stain. And that's there. Next is going to be just pure tongue oil. And the last is going to be the wipe on poly. Okay, I'll let that sit just a little bit. So, here's the stain coming off again. Here's the oil and stain coming off again. Tongue oil off again. And another one to give this a final buff, even though there's not much going on there. Okay, so the sun has moved. Let's get this all in the sun. 
I don't know if you can see what's going on here, but oddly enough, I'm gonna tell, let's get this off. I'm gonna take you off of there and we can sort of examine this. So this is the pure stain. This is the stain cut with tongue oil. This is the tongue oil and this is the wipe on poly. I'm surprised the wipe on poly actually came darker than the oil by itself, but maybe the subsequent layers would have done that. So this is quite dark. Um, in other words, it's a lot darker than it would be if I just tongue oiled it for sure. So I'm, I think that may be a bit too dark. Um, but really, time will tell. We'll see what this looks like tomorrow. Not that that's long enough. I'm not even sure really what I've achieved here because it takes months to really know what it's gonna look like with the finish on it. I kinda like this idea of cutting the tongue oil with the stain. Um, that way I'm already putting my first coat of tongue oil on and I'm adding a little color and I want to establish a system that I can use throughout the boat because all the rest of the cabinetry in this boat is going to be made the same way with the same uh, marine ply panels and the sapele frames. So I'd like to come up with a system that's going to work everywhere. Am I, I don't even know. Beer time. I just couldn't let this rest so I oiled up a little piece of uh, the sapele mahogany. Um, I don't know if you're getting the beautiful uh, glowing radiant stuff that happens with the sun with this stuff. I just love it. Anyway, um, it's dark. It's darker than that. But somehow this seems too brown to me. So I'm still not sure what I'm going to do. But I do know I have to do something because that's not going to work. And even that isn't. So pure stain or cut stain. Or maybe stain cut a little. Oh, jeez. The worst of it is, I gotta cut it in all around here because I can't be getting the stain on the mahogany. I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it's not ideal. Uh, tape and, uh, what was I thinking? Why didn't I get, yeah. So anyway, the point is, in future, I just make sure I stain all my panels before I glue them up. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, so I did it. Yeah, I, I just stained it. I just stained it. No masking tape, no nothing. I'm just gonna stain it on the logic that the little bits that touch the edge of the frame are staining wood that's going to be much darker anyway. So as long as I don't leave a glob of it anywhere, anywhere, the logic for this should be good. Anything that's right on top, I might sand back out again. But I'm feeling good about it. I know that that color is going to be a much better match for the Sapelli than that was. In fact, I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. So I'm just rubbing it out now. That looks awesome. Okay, let's get some more on. Yeah. Done. Both sides stained. I am so glad I did that. I'm so glad. I hope I'm saying the same thing tomorrow after I start putting some oil on here. But I, I just, uh, so happy. All right. And another day in paradise. A glorious, glorious day today. So look at this. It turned out really quite well. It almost looks kind of cool. It's that two-tone, doesn't it? Anyway, no. Well, it's hopefully when it's done, it won't look two-tone at all, which is what I was trying to avoid. Although there's no doubt that looks kind of cool. Anyway, so uh, late start today. Um, business meetings all morning, but it did mean I could get uh, some new oil, which is long overdue. I should mention the tongue oil I'm using is um, made here on the island by a teak importer. It's called Island Teak True Teak Oil. They're calling it teak oil. Well, apparently what they do, they take tongue oil and they mix in some oil wax extract from when they process teak. Uh, it's basically tongue oil, as far as I could tell. I'm um, sorry if the people at Island Teak contest that, but uh, whatever it is, it works, smells, acts exactly like tongue oil. Good tongue oil. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is sand a couple of tiny little spots where I let a little bit of stain get a little bit out of control up here, and uh, I think it's going to be just fine, but uh, we won't know until we put the oil on, won't we? Thanks. All right.
Okay, so I'm assuming this is going to go really swimmingly. Um, the only reason I'm assuming that is because I have to assume that and I need a bigger cloth than this. Oh, okay. Uh, I just want to do a little bit of color to color. See, that looks pretty good so far. Anyway, I just got to get it all on. Never mind instant gratification. I love it, I love it, oops. Love it, love it, love it. Now right now the center panels seem quite a bit darker and browner um, than the frame, but I know that this is going to go quite a bit darker and browner as the oil soaks in. I'm loving the way this is looking. Well, I'm loving the way the mahogany is looking. I'm not loving the way... But, almost done with the oil. I forgot the frames. Which, of course, still need to be gained for the hinges and drilled in. But I just want to get an initial coat of oil on them. So I'm just sitting here enjoying my twa dogs. And i got to say, that door looks absolutely fantastic. Totally, totally, totally thrilled. Anyway, so uh, tomorrow we'll get it up. All right, folks, just so you know, it isn't always glorious here in winter. It is absolutely teeming with rain out there today. And uh, that's okay, because lots to do in here. So time to hang this door, uh, which to begin with, I will um, cut the, uh, the mortises, or what I call gaining uh, the hinges. I'm actually using some very, very cheap hardware store hinges here today because I can't get out to um, Lee Valley today to get some of the really nice, beautiful uh, extruded uh, brass ones. But they're exactly the same size and these will do for now and I can replace them in time. So, just got to lay out where I'm going to put the hinges so that I can then decide where I'm going to um, put some screws to screw it to the bulkhead. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. So, two and a half, 13 and a half, 24 and a half, 35 and a half, just misses a hinge. I, I, I'm going to call that okay, otherwise this gets just out of hand. 13 and a half, 24 and a half, 35 and a half, 46 and a half, 57 and a half, excellent. That may seem like the sort of thing that is a little bit just too too much but I just I don't know I like to have a neat pattern of bungs okay so we'll just transfer this to the other side you know just you know not accurately after all I mean, we're not too worried about this so here's my poor man's uh, door vise uh, gosh it's time to get cleaned up in here the place is an absolute pigsty okay so I'm going to set this hinge here. Uh, a neat way to make sure it stays square is just lay the other leaf against the face of the door um, before you mark it or drill it or whatever your technique is. And so those of you who've been following along will remember my technique for uh, actually setting up the mortise. I just, once I've set the hinge temporarily in the right place, I just make a bunch of cuts for the edge of the mortise and then I'll remove it and use a chisel to clean it out. Okay, so now to put set up the hinges on the door frame and now this is getting a little bit esoteric because you have to make sure when you set up um, the hinges on the frame or on the door or whatever that when it closes the door stop clears the door. Uh, you don't want it to bite or you don't want it to be a great big gap there. So what I do what I did, and I try to always remember to do, is make the door frame a little, in other words, the dado in the door frame a little deeper than the width of the door. That way, if I make the back edge of the frame flush with the door, I know I have a 16th inch gap in here, which is about appropriate. So I know when I want to set up these hinges, 
I'm going to lay it on here, the hinge on here, and set it up on there. I have to leave this the correct gap here for that to happen. Not so easy to do. Actually, the thickness of the barrel of the hinge is exactly the same offset. All I do is put the hinge on backwards, and the barrel itself becomes the gauge. Let's just get this set up. I'm going to do the middle one first because it's a lot easier to balance the frame holding it up in the air uh, if I'm holding it at the middle. And I'll also do this end one so I can tie them in. I'm not sure I'm going to show you all this because you know, it's a bit, a bit dry really. Okay, let's go here. And that's it. Okay, I don't uh, expect this to go too swimmingly. In fact, I expect it to go rather stressfully. So I have a shim to put under the frame, uh, which I've calculated in my mind um, will be at exactly the right place so I can put a screw in and see if it sits. Basically, I want it to just miss the um, overhead here in the aft cabin. And then when I build a new frame, it'll uh, butt up against that. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get going and see how this goes. Absolutely perfect. Well, you folks were the first to see what the door looked like closed. The other side of the frame isn't on again. I just have to have a look. Let's have a look, see? I'll cover with fingerprints. I love it. I love it. I just love it. Fantastic. Okay. Okay, well, let me put a few more screws in. Nothing very exciting to watch. magnificent just a little bit snug at the bottom and I'll deal with that but in a way I wouldn't mind it sort of staying snug for a little while while I uh, sort out some stuff oh my gosh I am so pleased with that oh yes 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 well it is definitely definitely time for a cleanup I am done with this much dust and mess in here so we'll get to that but first you know what it's time for well, okay there, well, it won't be a beer of the week, but we can't have an episode without a beer. And good chance to talk about, you know, my favorite Sleemans. Now, again, this is not an exceptional beer, but it's a pretty darn good beer. And there's a couple of things about Sleeman that are really, really important. One, twist off. Now, I mean, yeah, almost everything is twist off today. But if you're drinking beer on the site, just wanted to have a quick beer after work while you're still doing stuff, plus it looks so gorgeous in the bottle, you don't need to put this in a glass. It smells like a lager. It's not a particularly sophisticated beer, but it's very, very tasty, and it's just so gorgeous. So, for your working day beer, long mowing the lawn beer, hanging out with the buddies after work beer, actually, Sleeman's Honey Brown is an absolutely awesome beverage. And so, cheers to you from Sleeman's. Sleeman's.